Hi everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. In case this is your first time watching one of my videos. Hi, I'm Leslie. I'm so glad to have you here. And of course, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. So today's video, as you might have been able to tell from the title, is going to be somewhat of a mixed bag of like recent favorites, I guess. I think like a couple of years ago, I tried to start filming monthly favorites, but that didn't really stick. What I'm going to try to do is film like quarterly favorites. And I'm not only covering like luxury pieces and handbags. In this video, I'm also going to cover skincare, some beauty items, hair stuff because hair is something I get asked about not so much on social media but more so like in real life what I'm doing with my hair. By the way everything I'm going to mention in today's video will be linked down below in chronological order of how I'm going through the items in this video and I'm going to try to group it in like categories. Talking about categories starting with the first one which is lashes. Might come like a bit random but I've gotten a good amount of questions in real life about my lashes. So I'm going to share my absolute go-to favorite ride or die products in this video. Starting with, doesn't look like much but I'm going to insert like close-ups and everything. The Revitalash, what's it called? Uh, Revitalash Advanced Eyelash Conditioner. So essentially this is a lash serum. I started using it in September, October last year and I'm going to include um, close-ups of me without any like mascara or like lash curler, anything like my bare lashes essentially on the screen right here. And I think they are pretty long. Like even without mascara, you can definitely see my lashes like from afar and that says a lot. So I've definitely seen a lot of growth. Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures before I started using uh, the Revital Lash, but just take my word for it they've grown significantly and not only like lengthwise but also thickness wise. There's some kind of magic in here, probably hormones, but I haven't had any issues. That's another thing. I haven't had any issues when it comes to like sensitivity or anything like that. And my eyes are usually pretty sensitive. Zero issues with this and um, I'm using it every night. Just um, looks like a little spoolie. Probably can't tell on camera, but just apply it like where the roots of your lashes are every night literally takes no time at all doesn't burn doesn't sting or anything and doesn't leave my eyes red or anything like that but contributes to very long lashes so if you're looking for long like voluminous full lashes definitely check the revital lash serum out talking about mascara this is my absolute go-to this is the maybelline new york falsies volume express waterproof. Waterproof is a personal preference of mine, but I'm fairly certain that this like Four Seas mascara also comes in a non-waterproof version if that's what you're going for. But this mascara is my absolute favorite. I will have inserted me without any mascara or anything like that. What I'm going to insert now is footage of me with just one coat of this Maybelline Four Seas mascara and volume, length, everything doesn't clump too much. Of course, like the longer your lashes are, the more likely it is that they're going to like stick together at the end. So sometimes if I've got time and patience, I'm going to go through my um, lashes while the mascara is still wet and kind of try to separate them. But even without doing that, um, I'm extremely happy with the performance of this falsies mascara so definitely check that out and the last favorite when it comes to lashes has been a favorite of mine for ages especially as i said i only ever wear waterproof mascara this is a godsend <laughs> it's uh, on its last leg so yeah i hope you're able to see it regardless and again i'm going to insert like close-ups this is the la roche posay respectissime waterproof eye makeup remover so you have this like two phase kind of thing then you shake it up it combines you like put it on a cotton wipe and it just works wonders on waterproof eye makeup in particular. Just let it soak, I like put it on cotton pads, let it sit on your lashes for like a couple of seconds and no rubbing required. Just wipe it off, like maybe go in with a second round, but most importantly, no rubbing required. And I've had my fair share of trying out and being disappointed with um, waterproof eye makeup removers because you at the end of the day with most of them even like expensive ones you have to rub and rub and yeah that's pretty irritating for your eyes so highly recommend this one i think i bought this particular one at a local pharmacy but i'm pretty sure they're also online so again links will be below couldn't recommend this highly enough so if you 
either use also waterproof mascara or if you have like heavy eye makeup with a lot of like glitter, eyeshadows and stuff, this is the way to go. So definitely check that out. The second category of favorites in today's video is going to be hair. To preface, I'm not overly happy with the current state of my hair. I do get balayage twice a year and of course like with bleaching and stuff that's pretty damaging to your hair um, but considering what I put my hair through I think I'm at a pretty good place but of course there's always room for improvement but um, yeah I'm going to share my favorites when it comes to hair. In saying that the first item that I'm going to show you it's not so much a favorite but more so a go-to of mine is shampoo so I'm using this drugstore one is from Garnier Fructis Aloe Hydra Bomb so that's what I'm currently using in terms of shampoo. I just, I mean, I do have A, long hair and B, pretty thick hair, I think. So I need a lot of shampoo and I don't see a reason or like, I just can't bring myself to spend like 30 bucks, 50 bucks, I don't know, on an expensive shampoo only to then having to end up using so much that I fly through the bottle. So that's why as of now, I'm going for a cheapy and out of the drugstore ones I've tried, this is my favorite. Another absolute staple and a product that I just can't live without, like literally, are these right here. These are the IGK Mixed Feelings Leave-In Blonde Toning Drops. I haven't had the best experience when it comes to like straight up purple shampoo or like silver shampoo because purple shampoos tend to be very drying. So the compromise or like the combination that I was able to come up with or not come up with, these are a staple item for a lot of people, is this right here. So what you end up doing is you take your regular conditioner, put like a couple of drops. So you have like this um, dropper up here, turn it upside down and purple, like very dark purple drops end up coming out. So you put that in your conditioner mix it up and then put it on your hair and yeah I feel like it's a lot nicer on your hair and you get the effect of a purple shampoo without the side effects of a purple shampoo so these are excellent I always have a backup at home because yeah I just I don't even want to risk washing my hair without this highly recommend if you have color treated hair blonde hair in particular I think they also do like a brunette version if I'm not mistaken um, I will have to look that up but yeah highly recommend these. Next off I have two more recent favorites so first one is the I think this brand is called or like pronounced Way, the Way volume spray and this is the living proof full thickening mousse. This I've had for a couple of months uh, you wouldn't be able to tell but essentially once you've like washed your hair and kind of like towel dried I think at least that's how I use it let's see directions spray damp hair oh, well okay damp I guess um, from root to tip before blow drying for long lasting volume so there's that and this one like same step I usually don't use the two of them in conjunction I'm either using this or I'm using this this has been a recent discovery like a month ago what I was trying to achieve with this mousse is more like texture um, around the root area because as I mentioned, my hair is pretty long, my hair is pretty thick, which also means it's pretty heavy. And the longer and heavier your hair is, the um, flatter it tends to look up here. So yeah, if you struggle with like flat and like tired looking hair, maybe try out this one or the Way Volume Spray. And neither of the two products leave my hair like looking crunchy or like feeling weird. Essentially, like they disappear and just leave the effect without um, leaving you with kind of weird feeling hair and I'm really particular about that. I, For that reason for instance I don't really like dry shampoo because it always leaves my hair feeling like weird and I'm someone that goes through her hair pretty regularly so I have to have um, my hair feeling like natural and not weird from any kind of products that's in there so I highly recommend the Living Proof Full Thickening Mousse and the Way Volume Spray. Two more hair care items. I wasn't aware that this category is quite as extensive, but here we are. By the way, if you're still around and if you enjoy my video, I would really appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Usually the focus on my channel is more so like luxury in particular, handbags, but also like shopping vlogs, travel vlogs, the occasional like high street fashion video thrown into the mix. So if that sounds like a thing, I would love for you to join my little YouTube family. But yeah. 
second to last hair care item and another like OG favorite of mine is the Gizu Honey Infused Hair Oil. This goes in my hair every time I'm leaving my apartment, not like the entirety of my hair, I'm also like the bottom third, I guess, or like the bottom fourth. So yeah, essentially just to add some moisture, I guess, or like, um, yeah, make my hair look less like straw. <laughs> Because even though I'm using conditioner and everything, sometimes, like also depending on the weather and everything, my hair can look quite dry. So these are excellent. Every time I'm leaving the door, I just like drop a couple of drops in my palm, massage it in, and then like just work it in my hair. Highly recommend this. I've tried the Olaplex. They also have a hair oil, I think. It's their number seven, if I'm not mistaken. I still have it somewhere, but that did nothing for my hair. I think the number seven Olaplex hair oil does have some like um, heat protector in there, but when it comes to like making your hair more shiny and more like moisturized and healthy, didn't do anything, like nothing whatsoever. I swear by the Gizu honey infused hair oil though, and I'm pretty sure this is my like second or third bottle. Yeah, highly, highly recommend this one. And talking about Olaplex, while I'm not a fan of their hair oil, the number three is the goat. <laughs> I should use it way more often than I do, probably like once a month. The truth looks more like I've used it in September last year, then completely fell off the wagon. I don't know why, because I did have like two full bottles, completely forgot about it. And then like last week and I was like, oh, I don't think I've used Olaplex for almost half a year. It's about time. So I ended up making a whole day out of it because with Olaplex number three, you have to leave it in. Some people leave it in overnight. I'm not a fan of that because that sounds really messy <laughs> in my book. So yeah, what I ended up doing is in the morning, I washed my hair because you're supposed to apply this to like damp hair, I think. Oh God, they say use once per week. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That didn't happen for me. Uh, yeah, apply to damp towel dried hair, um, generous amount, blah, blah, blah. Leave in for a minimum of 10 minutes. I usually aim for like five hours. There's no issue with that. They also say longer if desired and I definitely desire longer. And I usually drop the IGK drops in there. It definitely gives your hair another boost that you wouldn't be able to achieve from just using these drops in your conditioner day to day. So yeah, match made in heaven, but even without this, the Olaplex number three is excellent for like restoring, repairing um, and caring for your hair. So highly recommend, it really does help. Let's switch it up a bit before I talk about a couple more beauty items with a category that's close to my heart and close to the niche that I put myself in when it comes to YouTube, which is luxury. And I couldn't film a favorites video without including her. Ladies and gentlemen, her. This is my Hermes Birkin 35 Togo leather etube with gold hardware. If you haven't already, definitely make sure to check out my unboxing, reveal, and most importantly, story time on how I managed to get this bag. New from the boutique, not Paris, but my local boutique with very limited purchase history, let's put it that way. And yeah, she's dressed up already because I'm planning to take her out today. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just so excited and incredibly happy and grateful that this beauty is part of my collection and I will cherish her and love her and actually wear her. I'm pretty good uh, in general when it comes to like not putting bags on a pedestal. I think the bag that I'm most precious about is actually my um, Bulgari Serpenty Forever bag because the color is uh, so light and it's also a very smooth leather. I'm doing my best to also wear that bag more often because it would be just such a shame to just have it sit in my wardrobe and look pretty, but not actually get the wear. But yeah, that's the bag I'm most precious about. I'm not overly precious about wearing my Jumbo Classic Fab, although by now, since the last price increase, my Jumbo is actually more expensive than my Birkin, which is insane. Anyway, so I'm pretty good with not being overly precious with my bag. So definitely planning to actually wear my Birkin and not just have her sit in my wardrobe. Yeah, the second luxury favorite are actually 
these earrings. These are the Fendi Olog earrings. Again, links will be below and like the exact name because I think they're called Olog, but don't quote me on it. Yeah, these are so cute. I purchased them last year in Rome at the Fendi flagship boutique and I'm really surprised how much I'm actually wearing them because I mean, they do have a logo, but from afar you can't really tell it. And I really love this like pearl detail, obviously not real pearl, like faux pearl, but yeah, so pretty, perfect for like the office and everything. I, yeah, any occasion basically. Anyway, so those are a favorite as well. And the last luxury favorite I wanted to mention is my Goya Sensuclis card holder. I think I'm approaching like the one year mark of owning this. And ever since I purchased it in, I want to say like late May, early June in New York. And let's not talk about how much I overspend on this compared to if I was to purchase it in like Europe. We don't have a Goya boutique in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. But if I was to commit to waiting in line for like an hour in front of the Paris boutique, then I probably would have been able to pay way less for this card holder than I did in the US. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. It's long gone. I spent the money and I'm really glad I did because ever since I purchased it, like I'd say 99% of the time, sometimes like rarely I switch into another card holder. But at the end of the day, I always revert back to this one. And for it being such a light color, it's been holding up excellently and I don't really like baby it and just throw it in my bag. So really happy with this one and I just had to include it because it's definitely a favorite of mine. And to round up this video, let's get back to a couple of beauty favorites. I have skincare, makeup and fragrances. Starting with skincare, this is the Esper Optimal Skin Pro Moisturizer. It combines a lot of like aspects that I really appreciate about a moisturizer. I'm lazy and I don't want like a massive collection of skincare items. So I wanted a moisturizer that works both under makeup as well as at night for like a deep hydration. And this fits the bill. Works excellent under makeup, zero issues, like no pilling or yeah, no like weird interaction with the makeup, just works wonders. And even more importantly, um, especially for me, I've been struggling with acne ever since I can remember. I'm turning 29 uh, very shortly or I will have already turned 29 by the time this video goes up depending on like my upload schedule and I've had acne for as long as I can remember probably like for 15 years. I do have like phases of my skin looking pretty okay for my standards still nowhere near clear. I can't remember the last time my skin was clear probably like pre-puberty but um, I always struggle with breakouts. Hormonal breakouts, any kind of breakouts, reaction to food, to, I, I don't know, anything. My skin is pretty sensitive and I've had my fair share of breakouts due to products, but this one, zero issues. And that's rare for me. I just couldn't be happier. Zero issues when it comes to breakouts. My skin isn't clear, but this at least doesn't like make it worse. <laughs> so that's a plus in my book. One makeup favorite. If you know me, you'll know I'm pretty minimal when it comes to my makeup, especially when it comes to my makeup collection. I have one foundation, one concealer, uh, one powder, bronzer, like two eyeshadows maybe, one mascara and one blush. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't get that much enjoyment out of collecting makeup. I get enjoyment out of collecting handbags and also like stuff goes bad and everything. Anyway, long story short, this is my current blush and it's um, an expensive one at that. It's from Hermes. So look at that beautiful packaging. It's in the color Rose Ombre. It's also <laughs> magnetic. So at least you kind of get what you pay for. And the packaging is beautiful, but also the shade. I've had this for, I'd say like a year and I feel like I'll be working on uh, using this up for like the foreseeable future, probably a couple of years, because if I like try to look at it um, like horizontally, I don't see any dent in there. And ha! <laughs> again. Okay. Um, anyway, highly recommend this one. It is pricey. 
you can probably find something similar at the drugstore and that's usually me i think before this one i had one from wet and wild something i picked up in the us um yeah super affordable and that worked fine for me i mean this is definitely not a necessity you're definitely able to find way cheaper items or like you can build a whole blush collection at the drugstore with a price um, that you would have to fork out for just one blush from hermes but i just adore this and yeah can't recommend this enough. I mean, they do have quite a number of shades and they like continuously add up to their like makeup portfolio. They have, I think they also have bronzers and of course like their plein air um, foundation. Haven't tried that one yet. And I'm pretty happy with my Chanel foundation. I should have mentioned that as a favorite as well because yeah, I only ever use Chanel. I think it's called Le Teint Ultra or Ultra Le Teint, something like that. Um, yeah. I'll include a link to that as well in the description box below because I'm really happy with that. It's on the high coverage side, I guess, because that's what I need and that's what I want from a foundation because breakouts, pigmentation from acne scars and stuff, I do need something with a little more coverage. So yeah, highly recommend the Chanel Le Teint Ultra Foundation. Anyway, where was I going? How did I get here? Oh yeah, right. I haven't tried the Hermes foundation because I've heard that that one is more like a BB cream and BB cream doesn't sound like enough coverage for me. So yeah, this blush is definitely a favorite of mine and also the packaging is so beautiful. So yeah, highly recommend. All right, we're on the home stretch. I have two fragrances and then we're done. So first fragrance favorite will be no surprise. And if you've watched my fragrance or like perfume collection, you will be kind of surprised or maybe not i don't know it's maison francis kirchian baccarat rouge 540 i mentioned in that video that i'm trying to not wear this like for the foreseeable future because i think i've gotten kind of nose blind to it which is such a shame especially considering it's a pricey fragrance this has been my signature scent for i'd say like three years minimum and it's just i mean in the like fragrance community on YouTube, people kind of bash this fragrance because they say like everyone is wearing it and it's not like even a niche fragrance anymore because it's so like overly saturated, but this is a distinctive scent. So if someone is wearing it, I'll be like, okay, that's Baccarat Rouge 540 and I hardly ever have that kind of scenario happen. So at least from my experience, this is definitely still a niche fragrance and a beautiful one at that. So. Highly recommend Baccarat Rouge 540. It is on the pricier side, so a great alternative would be, which I also own, the hair fragrance. I mean, we all know putting like perfume in your hair isn't the best because of the alcohols and everything. So this is like excellent from that perspective as well. And it's way cheaper than the fragrance, but you get like the same scent essentially. So highly recommend checking out the Baccarat Rouge 540. What is it called? Like scented hair mist. So essentially a hair perfume nicer to your hair and it gives you the same kind of scent as Baccarat Rouge for a fraction of the price. Oh, and circling back to um, me saying that you might be surprised or you might not be surprised, I did say that I wanted to try to stay away from this fragrance, but I just can't. I can't. This fragrance will probably forever stay my signature scent. I am trying to venture out um, and wearing, yeah, other fragrances that I do have in my collection and I'm also trying out new fragrances, but at the end of the day, if I want a, like, blind grab don't think about it um suits any occasion in my personal opinion some people say it's a pretty like heavy scent for me it's not but that might also be because i'm still somewhat nose blind to it anyway this is just perfection so i tried i failed um i just yeah i always end up gravitating to the Baccarat Rouge 540. And the second perfume favorite, I sadly can't show you like the full bottle because I haven't purchased it yet, but it's Parfum de Mar, the Delina Exclusive. I will insert like a photo up here. What I do have is like a pretty generous um, decant, I think. Um, it's like eight mil, probably. It's from a company that sells, I think it's like, like Scentbird. Uh, you do have something like that, like a like fragrance subscription service in the US. This is called 
Pafori. They don't know who I am. They're not sponsoring this video or anything like that. I found it like just by searching for a small bottle of the Delina Exclusive. I've since canceled the subscription because essentially all I wanted uh, was Delina Exclusive and I do have it now and oh, the scent is just so beautiful. I have tried the like original Delina and also the Delina La Rosé. Out of the three, Delina Exclusive is definitely my favorite. Second place goes to the Delina La Rosé. It's not completely different, but definitely way different from the Delina Exclusive. And third place will go to the original Delina. I think it's a little too tart for my liking. So yeah, Delina Exclusive is such a beautiful scent. It's a niche perfume, which also means it's pretty pricey. And um, as opposed to the original Delina, which also comes in a smaller bottle, the Delina Exclusive only comes in a, I think like 75 ml bottle. Yeah, it's a niche perfume. It's expensive, but it lasts ages on my skin. Same goes for the Baccarat Rouge, by the way. Um, sometimes I spray it on like a coat, or like I spray it on when I'm wearing a coat, then I'm storing the coat away for like two weeks and when I take out the coat again, it still smells like Baccarat Rouge. I'd imagine something similar happening with Delina Exclusive, at least like on my skin, um, it lasts, yeah, I can smell it like the day after I applied it and I don't go ham with spraying it because it's a pretty potent scent. So I'd say like two spritzes is plenty and I'm good to go for yeah the entire day. And I love the scent so much and yeah, Someday down the line, I think I will have to splurge and get a full bottle because also the bottle is really aesthetically pleasing. But even factoring out the beautiful packaging, the scent is just so heavenly. And there you have it. Those were my current favorites as of like the end of March 2023. Let me know if you want me to continue filming these on like, as I said, a quarterly basis, maybe like spring favorites, summer favorites, like autumn, winter favorites, something like that. Definitely let me know if you'd be interested. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you were able to get some inspiration. If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. I would love to have you back. I upload every Wednesday and I guess before I keep you any longer, I'm going to catch you in my next video. Bye.